Hey, what's up guys, Aaron over here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 81 today for the Belgium Grand Prix in Season 5. If you guys did miss the previous episode, upload it a couple of days ago, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. That was the British Grand Prix, and it was, well, a bit dramatic, a bit controversial in many regards, and different reasons for the AI puncher gate with Carlos Sainz having a puncher seemingly out of nothing, just going over over the curb where everyone else was fine kind of ruined his kind of attempt at uh, fighting for the race win and I think we could have easily been going on to, to, to race for the win. I was actually quite confident about winning our home race but spoiler alert, obviously it didn't end exactly how we wanted to. For the very first time, I think in history of a career mode series of mine on this channel, we had two DNFs in a row, let alone two mechanical failure DNFs. So, you know, not a crash, just literally our engine failing. This time it was the internal combustion engine, if you uh, were curious. The turbocharger went to Austria and now the internal combustion engine. So, whilst we sign Leclerc for the second part of the season, it's going to be crucial that he remains focused. 91 focus. We're going to need him to start using that a bit because he's fallen off a little bit in the last two episodes, not been quite there right with us. And we need him. We need every point we can get as a team because we're now no longer in a comfortable position. We're in fact behind McLaren in the Constructors' Championship and George Russell, well he's won three races now this season. The only man to win even two, let alone three and he's won two races back to back. It was a 1-2 for McLaren at the at Silverstone the British Grand Prix. So uh, I think a lot of you guys were actually enjoying that fact but it was a little bit frustrating, I can't lie for myself not because of the DNF but more because it was clear that Verstappen and Giovinazzi and, and, and Sainz were going to be there, especially Verstappen was leading the race. Giovinazzi was there as well. And I would have uh, thought if we had carried on the race, even if I wasn't in the fight, I feel like Verstappen and Giovinazzi would have ended up on the podium, you know, you know, barring any incident for them. So I feel like the simulation alone of when you retire and the game simulates the rest off camera, I think because of that, that's the only reason Russell and McLaren got a 1-2 and, you know, you saw Gasly up there, whereas in reality, I think you saw the McLarens weren't quite there. They may have, you know, proved me wrong and caught up to Verstappen in Science and uh, and Giovinazzi, but I feel like uh, the game kind of gifted uh, that podium sequence. It was the same podium runners that we had in Austria, so you can see there's clearly a game coding pattern there. But we're going to push past. I'm not trying to make any excuses or whatever, because you know clearly Russell's you know AI is very very good at the moment this season. 93 rated, 80. 86 focus, which is still pretty damn high really in, you know, re re relative to other drivers and the whole entire grid, and he's clearly driving well, so you know, he deservedly, you know, is right there in the fight, uh, but you know, he has a massive now, what was it, 41 or 42 points ahead of us? I think that's maybe the largest gap I've ever had to try and bridge if I want to be in a championship fight with him and other drivers by the end of the season. I mean, everyone, barring him, has to try and bridge that gap, basically, because even the gap from him to Guan Yu Zhou. I think it's quite large in the driver's standing. So this is going to be an uphill battle for everyone. And uh, the question mark is, can anyone stop George Russell? Well, we're going to try and answer just that as we come to the Belgium Grand Prix. And I'm still in pretty good spirits because let's look at the facts. The reality was we were in the lead for the Austrian Grand Prix when our turbocharger went. We had just overtaken five cars to get into that lead. At the British Grand Prix, we were fighting for the win. Obviously, we had that little bit of damage with Verstappen and Giovinazzi in that pinching moment, but we were going to be there, and I think under the safety car, we were only, you know, P7 on, uh, you know, I think uh, the better tyre, which was the medium, actually, in reality, because, you know, even though I wanted to go into the hard tyres then, because of the safety car, actually, the medium then became a better race tyre, because there's less distance to go. So, I think we would have been in a shout to win it. So, both times that we've had DNFs, we have been fighting for the win. So there's no reason why for the third third race in a row now we can be fighting for the win. And if we get a DNF for the third time in, in a row, then 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 I'll have to throw in the towel. I'll have to eat my own shoe or, you know, do, do something. Because that will just be a bit too uncanny if it happens a third time. So let's get our head down, try and do the job. You know, we've been really good in qualifying lately. You know, we've been aiming for 
the top rows. Austria was the only blip. Apart from that, in the last four races, we've been on the front row. So we're going to do it again. And this time last season, season four, we were on the front row alongside, I think it was Valtteri Bottas, wasn't it? In a very surprising Williams pole position back then, but wouldn't be too surprising these days in season five. We're very used to the Williams having the speed, but it's not really truly been there, of course, in the race. But uh, yeah, we're aiming for that and we go well around here. Clearly we did last season. The car goes well. I go. I actually like Belgium a lot. There's a good flow to it. So we're aiming for that top spot, hopefully. But we're going to get through into the top 10 shootout. That's the first uh, hurdle into that kind of foray to try and aim for the front row. But I mention it because Leclerc has not for the second time in a row. What is going on with Leclerc? He's 91 in focus, remember. And we mentioned we need him to be there. Both McLarens are through into the top 10 shootout. So that's not great. He's going to have to do some overtaking tomorrow to hopefully try and beat at least one of them. You know, if I can beat one McLaren and he beats the other one, then we outscore the entire team and we try and bring back this Constructors' Championship. You know, forget about the drivers for a second in terms of me bridging a 41-point gap. The Constructors, we've won three in a row. Like, it would be amazing, amazing to try and aim for the four in a row, something that I don't think we, we didn't do in F1 2020 exactly. You know, there was a break in between. So this would be some kind of good record for us in the new My Team Career Mode era to try and get four in a row done on this game. And our teammates have been so strong on this year's game. You know, they've been, well, quicker than me a majority of the time, one could argue, in the seasons. But Leclerc is really now having a bit of a slump and kind of losing momentum. You know, focus is there as a tangible number, but it seems that there is still that kind of just wish-washy momentum that's there with the AI. That if they have a bad race, even their focus is high, they'll continue to have a bad one unless they can, you know, kind of reset and, you know, get a win, get a podium, which Leclerc has not been doing. But we're not focusing on him. We're focusing on us. And at the moment, it's overcast right now. We went early for a, for an, uh, a first fly lap because I didn't know there was maybe rain coming. We've seen that before at Belgium, uh, where the rain comes as you start the first flying lap. So at the moment, it is all dry. And this will be our one and only lap time, remember. And we're on provisional pole position. And we're going to maybe share the front road Bottas again. It's season four all over, although no, it won't be. I thought it may have been season four's front row, but the other way around, ourselves on pole, Bottas in second. No, Verstappen comes out of nowhere. How's he done that? And the Mercedes, in that midfield Mercedes car, he has gotten bag pole position by a tiny margin, so that's really frustrating. That That's literally like a lock-up or something or, or other that could have got us pole position here, but uh, Russell strong again though, P4, so he's not going anywhere, he's still doing the best job he can to be there you know, limiting the damage that you know, we might inflict if we go on to, uh, to get a good result from the front row, but um no one else has uh, another lap apart from Sonoda then. Everyone just had one flyer. So that is it. We all went out at the start of the session because we're wary of rain and that is how it ends then. Max Verstappen on pole position in a Mercedes that very much really shouldn't have the pace to be there really if you look at where Hamilton is and where the team has been the last couple of seasons. That is insane but we're on the front row alongside him. That's great. Ahead of Russell but he's only one row behind us so he's going to be lurking and around so tomorrow it's one of the most important races of our entire career mode let's go welcome along then to the belgian grand prix the race that gave us the maiden victory for the jordan team in 1998 and in the same team the phenomenal debut of a young michael schumacher there's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit so here we are once again ready to go racing through the ardennes forest 4.35 miles of long straights, fast corners, and massive elevation changes. It makes this not only one of the most exciting circuits on the calendar, but one that makes for some consistently high quality racing as well. Simply put it, there really is no place quite like Spa. Anthony Davidson, a very warm welcome to you as you join me in the commentary box for today's event. Let's have a chat about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. 
Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position and the owner driver alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Bottas, Russell, Carlos Sainz, and Giovinazzi, Norris, Gasly, Ocon, and Charles Leclerc, Ricardo, Stroll, Nikita Mazepin, and Joe, Latifi, Eilert, Lewis Hamilton, and Mick Schumacher, Aitken, Sonoda, they've taken a grid penalty, Matsushita, and Christian Lungard. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, the scene is set then here for the Belgium Grand Prix. We're on the front row in second place uh, again, as we were in season four. But this time we've got a Mercedes, a slightly different looking Mercedes on the front row right beside us. Verstappen, he will be standing in our way between ourselves and the race lead in the first lap. But then there's 22 to go. Still a long, long race. And tyre wear is going to be a tricky one, but I think we should be able to manage a soft to medium. The crucial thing will be trying to extend the soft tire stin as much as we can without losing too much time but we've done it before plenty of times going on to the medium it is the better race tire the hard just takes way too long to rubber in around here I feel even though it will easily go the distance the medium may be a bit of jeopardy at the end but I think we can do the work on the soft compound that shouldn't be an issue and really the bigger the biggest thing will just be trying to well first of all get the staff in or wherever we need to get in the first few laps and then it's about trying to break that one second toe and kind of, you know, pull away. Because around here on the F1 game, it's so easy to overtake and re-overtake and just, you know, go back and forth because of the slipstream and how powerful it can be with Max that car. So we know what we want to do today. It's one of the most crucial races potentially in this My Team career mode as we go to five red lights to the Belgium Grand Prix. And we're underway. And what, what a start that it was for us versus Max Verstappen. That was pretty much pin perfect as soon as the lights went out we reacted on point you could almost say we're kind of counting uh, seconds to when it was but I'm, I'm not kidding that was just literally the best start I've maybe ever had on this game we didn't kind of preempt the lights going out I just was so on it like a car bonnet and we're up into first place meanwhile behind Bottas defending Giovinazzi trying to make an overtake and also George Russell's lost positions he's down to P5 as we We've got the Ferrari trying to overtake him. He might be pushed down to P6 there. Russell's lost two positions as now Sainz dives down the inside. Lock up from the Williams who's lost a bit of his front wing. Bottas has got damage then and the Ferrari is up into P4. Sainz uh, with a double overtake then Russell up into P5 as well as Bottas is slow. We're slow though as well through Puon. The AI are so unbelievably good through here. We're trying to squeeze out Verstappen. Trying to defend Defend, but he's got us. He's on the racing line and we've been squeezed out. We've been washed out with that understeer and we're back down to P2. So all that hard work undone a little bit right now at the end of lap one. But we have Blanchemont. We have the bus stop chicane still to come. And this may just turn into an absolute scrap and a half with Max Verstappen. We haven't really had a, much of a fight, you know, consistently with Verstappen in this career mode as a whole so far in this entire series. So it's going to be some fun to fight Verstappen toe-to-toe -to -toe for the first time, really. He's in the Mercedes. We're on a Porsche. Can we try and get first place back? We're on the outside. Our rear wing has failed. Our rear wing has failed. And we've gone wide there. I was too busy looking at the bottom right, being surprised by our rear wing failure. Oh, locked up and went too wide. So we're down to P3 now. Giovinazzi, opportunistic. Up into P2 in the Red Bull, but we're pushing him up the hill. We should surely be able to overtake him in the Red Bull historically. Not been the best in a straight line, but Giovinazzi holding his own. We use a bit of ERS to punch past him. Late on the brakes, dive down the inside, but we take too much of the curb. And we have to step out the action, step off the throttle and catch the car. And only just survive that, really, as we graze the rear end of Giovinazzi. But here we go then. Look at the start we got for, for one. I mean, we're on board with Bottas, but what a start we got. Literally, the, the second, the second the lights went out, 
we were on the way. But this is where Bottas then got the damage. So Verstappen actually got so flustered by me, I guess, into turn one that he kind of started to lock up and he kind of backed into Bottas. And that's where the damage came for him. For Carlos Sainz then, here's a replay just you can see where the carbon fiber was coming off. We're going to watch this replay of Carlos Sainz just to watch where this double overtake came from because he gets Giovinazzi, I think, into a rouge hole. Oh, that's very fine. That may have been a bit, da a bit of damage for Sainz, you know. Who I think, I, I know maybe, is now pitting at the end of lap one. So, Sainz, this is where he maybe got the damage. You see Giovinazzi getting up into P3. A lovely move around the outside of the Williams. And Sainz goes waltzing round the McLaren. And you can see the bot and Bottas is so slow with that major wing damage that even Sainz with tiny wing damage can overtake him. But I'm sure Sainz has now made a pit stop as well. So both Sainz and Bottas are in to the pits for a front wing change. It was just that Bottas had a more dramatic bit of front wing damage compared to the Spaniard. Back to the race at hand though at the forefront. Verstappen and Russell swapping a fast lap of the Grand Prix. So it's crucial for us now to overtake Giovinazzi to then try and go and chase after the Dutchman because Russell, our main, well, the, the championship leader, the man we're trying to bridge the gap to in the championship now for the remainder of this season. He is in P4, so he's only just down the road. So we need to try and do as much as we can to be fighting for this race win. You know, if we get second place and Russell gets fourth at least, minimum that's really not good enough that's that's hardly any points in comparison to a whopping 41 or 42 or whatever it is that we've got in deficit to him going into this one and so we're going to chase after Verstappen but lap four our rear wing is still broken so we pushed away from Giovinazzi we've clearly just got some pure raw pace in this car but without DRS it's going to be quite tricky to overtake Verstappen on that main straight it may be a little bit different though through Blanchimont because Verstappen is a bit wide and just maybe slows himself down on the curb we go for the dive we have to take a lot of curb on the inside there just to try and keep that side by side we kind of just trying to you know hustle and harry verstappen to make a bit of an error he goes defensive into turn one we go to the outside oh bit of bare tire banging there as verstappen tries to squeeze us but off turn one we get a mega exit and we're now side by side so fine on the right but we're gonna go side by side into rouge and he blinks first and lets us through Verstappen not choosing to commit to that up the hill probably deciding to instead re-overtake us maybe as he comes through. He's got DRS of course so he's got the overspeed but we pinch him into the right hand side and just about defend this P1. Now in first place of course we don't even have DRS anyway so the fact that our rear wing's broken won't matter too much at the moment as Verstappen sends it! Oh my god! Verstappen out of nowhere! Uh, the kamikaze he dive down the hill. He's made some contact with us, I'm pretty sure. We're now side by side down the hill. We're back into P1. Verstappen tucks in, but through Puon, he's going to be so good. We're so poor. The AI are literally on rails through that corner. We're going to come back at him, though. Down the inside. We're still going at it toe to toe. And then the next section. Oh, Verstappen's lost the back end. Oh, my word. Oh my days. That was an amazing battle. And that was such a lifelike performance from Verstappen there. Uh, very realistic dive bomb and over-aggression from him, I must say, on the inside there. Makes a bit of contact, so I don't know if he's got damage or not. I don't think so, but very, very late lunge from Verstappen. And, you know, if I closed the door anymore, there would have been a crash and would have been a spin for one of us, probably. But then he goes down the inside. Good bit of an overtaking there by the Dutchman. But then this next part is very peculiar because he basically just loses the rear end like oh he gets on the curb and I mean it's great drifting skills from Verstappen Giovinazzi now up into P2 really well held great catch by Verstappen um, but very odd to see you know that was literally all him we made no contact we were nowhere near him actually and he just got it all crossed up on the curb but that's, that's so like lifelike like so human like uh, of Verstappen's AI so I was very impressed by that I've never seen that happen uh, with an AI just losing the back end on a curb Usually the player is the one that has uh, you know issues with the curb. But now Verstappen is trying to make amends on lap seven. He closes up to Giovinazzi, but it's not quite enough to overtake him. Meanwhile, Russell has slowly gone about his business and is there in P4, only about you know less than a second now behind uh, behind Verstappen. Meanwhile, his teammate Lando Norris fighting Guan Yu Zhou and the Williams. Guan Yu Zhou looking for the overtake. It's McLaren v Williams. It's going back to the old. 
old ages and a tie, you know, iconic fight between these two iconic brands. And it also includes Jaguar as well. And we've got the Ferrari and Ricardo just behind, but up the road then, bit of a gap, Gasly in P5, he's even closing up to be honest, so, so this could be a four way fight between Giovinazzi, Verstappen Russell and Gasly we're pulling away, two seconds the gap Verstappen versus Giovinazzi that will help us, that will help us pull away and just, well at the moment what I need to do is you know maintain this P1, maintain this kind of two plus second gap because this allows me time just to kind of ease into corners, not take it too harshly, try and not up as much to try and protect those tyres. Meanwhile, Verstappen is in. Verstappen's in. Bit of an early pit stop, I would say. So that's going to maybe make us react because Russell's continued on along with Gio and Gasly. But if Verstappen is coming in now, maybe we need to think about covering him off. I don't know. Let's see. Lap number eight, we are going to continue on because actually my pace is pretty okay. We're not going quicker. We're not sending green lap times, but we're not going too slow. Meanwhile, Giovinazzi and Russell are in for their pit stop, as well as Grand New Joe and Ricardo. Oh no, they're side by side in the pit lane. This cannot end well, and it's not going to. It's not quite the dramatic crash I thought it was going to be. Grand New Joe saved by the game mechanics, resetting in the pit lane. But the full call saved Tagara is out. Mazepin's out the Grand Prix. Is that the safety car out for the pit lane incident? I don't think it is. It's because of this. The Alpine spins it. A Bonchimon, and oh, there's a massive, massive crash. Sonoda and Callum Eilat, I think that is, caught up in that. That's so unfortunate for the Japanese driver. Completely blindsided. Such a dangerous incident there between the Alpine driver, Mazabin Eilat, and the Aston Martin. That, I mean, that's just, so, he's coming at full power. I don't know why there weren't yellow flags there. So the safety car's out. We continued on. So I was worried that we got screwed over by the fact that the safety car came out as we'd already gone past the bit lane entry. But because we're 20 seconds ahead of everyone, because we're the only, well, apart from Leclerc, we were the only other car yet to pit in that whole kind of uh, pack. So we've got the gap. And so under the delta time, we should be fine. We're in. No damage for us. Easy does it. Onto the mediums. And now with the safety car, easily, easily should be able to go to the end on the set of medium tyres. Leclerc, interestingly, does not come in. So that's a bit of a mistake by Leclerc. He had the gap to, to double stack because I nearly, uh, nearly hit the safety car because I was unsure what the hell he was doing. And I didn't actually see him blindside a bit because I was focused on Leclerc. But um, Leclerc... He's not come in, and really he should have come in and double stacked, because now he's going to be nowhere. And so here on lap 10, I'm trying to encourage him to come in. I don't know what I was really thinking of doing, because I know there's no mechanic of that, because I was, I was trying to basically just try and force him right to go into the pit stops, but the ghosting system just made him ghost through me. So Leclerc has overtaken me under the safety car, and is in first place. But he's obviously still got a pit. So in reality, uh, you know, it doesn't matter to me. You know, we're going to be in first. Leclerc is going to pit either this lap as he comes as the safety car comes in. Or he's going to pit in the next lap or two. And he's going to be nowhere. So I think let's try and help our team out. Because, yes, I've got my own race to worry about. But I need him to try and at least beat one of the McLarens today to try and help our constructors call. So I just slow down and I thought maybe i will get a warning for this because in, I think in real life the rule is you have to be 10 car lengths. You know, you can't, you know, drop that. But now because the safety car is coming, maybe the game doesn't think that rule applies. So I just slow down. Very cheeky, I know, but the game mechanics allow it. And it is a video game. It is a career mode and I'm trying to help my teammate. I'm not trying to help me out. There's nothing to do with me. It's to, to do with him. I'm trying to help Leclerc out as much as I can here. So we go racing with a with an 8.3 second gap to Leclerc. Bit ridiculous, I know, but I'm trying to do as much as I can as a good teammate to help him out. Because now when he pits, yes, he'll be last place. He'll be behind all of us, but he won't be as far back as let's say Stroll and Hamilton will be. Because those two have also not pit, and I bet you will see later on in this Grand Prix. They're going to be miles away. Meanwhile, for us, 
we've still, we, we, you know, we're still comfortably in P2 right now, which will turn into P1. And Giovinazzi, well, he didn't have the speed on the on the exit to, uh, to 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 really bother us. So me doing that hasn't affected my race either. So you know, you may have th thought I was putting myself in jeopardy, but no, it's fine. Leclerc's in now, and he is well. I'm I'm still slowing Giovinazzi down a little bit just to give Leclerc as much help as I can here. So I I I surely deserve the teammate of the year award if Leclerc goes on to do on this race because we've done a defensive job and a half though into turn one however we've locked up Giovinazzi down the inside but it's okay it's okay here at Spa it's better to be at this position if you don't have the overall speed it's better to be behind the car to re-overtake him to get this upstream like we have done we know we're quicker than the Red Bull up the hill it's very very fine as the Italian squeezes us to the left hand side but we re-overtake him up into first place and it's crisis averted and we now well our, our game plan is to now try and break the one second and pull away from the Italian uh, in second place. Gasly third, Ocon fourth, Schumacher fifth, Bottas in sixth. Russell was in P7, but he's just been dive-bombed by Daniel Ricciardo. He just got overtaken by Bottas as well, I'm pretty sure as well. What's happening to George Russell, the championship leader, the man we want to try and get as many points on? He's having a mare. Verstappen's down the inside. Has he got an issue? Has he got a mechanical issue that's slowing him down temporarily let's have a look at a replay so on the restart he was actually going for a move on Mick Schumacher I'm pretty sure this is yes it is Mick Schumacher on the outside he tries to overtake the German but instead I think gets overtaken by yeah by Bottas Bottas just slides down the inside He's up the order, and then this is a huge dive from Ricardo, and Russell's clearly got some niggling issue or something because he's just going very, very slow. He's got, he's, he, there's no damage on the car, so I don't know what it is really, but you know, whatever it is, it, it's hampering him because then Verstappen goes down the inside as well. So. This is a disaster for Russell. This is a disaster for McLaren. It's amazing news for us. This is exactly what we need. Russell having issues whilst we're up in first place. And we cut back to the live racing action. And he's still got issues. Because Guan Yu Zhou now is going to overtake him. And relegate him maybe down to P10 uh, in this race. This is quite something. This is the literal best scenario ever. We're in first place. Russell's down in P10. And, you, well, you've got to think behind him. Sainz there as he overtakes Latifi. Sainz may be able to overtake him as well. So we're going to have to watch out for this later in the lap to see what Sainz can do. But Russell's clearly struggling a lot. And it's not a McLaren issue because look at that. Lando Norris is overtaking Latifi and he's catching up with uh, Carlos Sainz. So it's not an issue that Lando has. So the, the, the McLaren has pace. We saw that. Russell was in P4 and qualifying, but he's got some sort of mechanical issue. We know that can be a thing for the AI where, uh, you know, I'm told on the radio that so-and-so's got an issue. They're going to be slow temporarily. It's probably usually for about, you know, three or four laps, but it's enough laps for damage to be done. And clearly damage is going to be dealt here as Carlos Sainz now on the left-hand side. The long way around of the Brits and Russell is just defenseless. This is going to be so painful for him. Of course, though, the, the flip side is because he's got such a big cushion in the champ, it won't matter too much to him. He's still going to be leading the way by quite a fair amount, but it obviously helps us out. And then look at this. Leclerc, he's right on the back of Aiken. Whereas Hamilton, uh, a few seconds further down the road. So it's not a massive difference, but it's a difference nonetheless that we helped out Leclerc be right there with Aiken. And hopefully Leclerc to go, could go on to overtake Russell even, maybe, if Russell's issues uh, you know, uh, continue uh, for the remaining laps. He's been overtaken by his teammate now, so really showing that Lando is quick and uh, it's really just down to, to an issue with uh, Russell's car. Saying that though, Lando, I've already noticed, he's on the soft compound attire. So McLaren are doing a two-stop with Lando Norris. So McLaren, as a team, they've really balls up this race. I don't know why Norris is on a two-stop and Russell's just got an issue, uh, even though he's going to the end of the Grand Prix. So all round, not great for the, uh, well, the, the well, what used to be Papaya and now Golf. Uh, baby blue and papaya cars. Meanwhile, up the order, Ocon still sits in P4, very amazingly, in the Alpine. So how long can he keep that up? And then we've got Gasly chasing off to Giovinazzi.
Messi, who is trying to keep the pressure on myself on that 15. We're going to try our best to try and break the one second, or at least try and maintain the lead base and keep Giovinazzi at an arm's length. And that's exactly what's happening now. Lap 20. So five, six laps have gone by. We're still in first. The whole time we've kept Giovinazzi at a very stable seven to uh, six to seven tenth gap, which I'm really happy about. Quite proud at being that consistent. Meanwhile, Schumacher finally making a move. It might be on for a very strong race for the Red Bull family as Giovinazzi, Gasly, and now Schumacher are what, uh, two, three, and four. Ocon doing an amazing job, it must be said, in the Alpine, but he just can't hold on for any longer, and he's down to P5 then. But Schumacher, good overtake for him. A strong race then for Red Bull as a whole to be up in P2 and P4. Meanwhile, Russell... Well, by lap 20, his car has been fixed. You can see now he's pulled away from Latifi, whereas before he was actually holding up Latifi. So his car's fixed, but the damage has been done. He's pulled away from Latifi, but he can't catch up to Sainz because even with a quick McLaren, you know, the Ferrari's still pretty quick and Russell's now no man's land. Meanwhile, Ro uh, Norris did pit again and Leclerc, I don't know what's happened to Leclerc. He's on the hards. He's been on the hards the whole time. So I think that's half the reason why he's doing so poorly. But I think he's just lost confidence. And it's very, very peculiar. Just no momentum with the man from Monaco. Meanwhile, to the last half of the Grand Prix, my tyres are now very, very worn to the point where the game is indicating we could be at the puncher territory. And Giovinazzi is right up our chuff. He's pushing us up the hill this time. In stark contrast to before, the Red Bull. Could he go for a move for P1 on the last? Last lap, we've done so well to hold him at seven tenths, but now he's got DRS, he's got the exit, but instead we're going to try and go back down the inside and we're going to just hold through. We won't get overtaken this time as we did before by Giovinazzi and we won't back down in that corner like we had to previously versus the Italian. And although he had a good run, I think we should be able to just hold this through. We've saved ERS on purpose for the end of the lap. So Gio will pressurize us. He's there. Four tenths, three tenths. He'll gain through Puon. He's going to be right there. Two tenths the gap now. But we'll hold it through on the racing line. But this has been a very pressurized last half of the Grand Prix because of our tire wear. You might be thinking, why are we now suddenly, you know, struggling versus Giovinazzi? This 70% tire wear on the front left especially, really hurting the turn in in the last two laps, more so than previous laps where we were able to be quite consistent but now the tires are going off the cliff as they say, but we're coming through Blanchumon towards the bus stop chicane. We tried to win in Austria. We tried to win in Silverstone. We got met with two heavy blows, two DNS, the third time lucky. We're going to do it from the front row to the win with the fast up of the Grand Prix. We've won the Belgium Grand Prix. It's our second race win of this season and maybe one of the most crucial race wins in our entire My Team career mode. As Russell scores no points, we get the win. We make up for Silverstone. Here we are then, a real team effort to overcome their rivals for a memorable win here today. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Well, there we go. P1, the win at the Belgium Grand Prix. That is what we needed. That was exactly what we needed. And even more so, you know, I wanted to win the race, but I was expecting Russell to be there. Um, you know, maybe hopefully not on the podium, but, you know, at least P4 where he qualified. But... The fact that Russell scored zero points with that mechanical issue basically just undoes uh, the British Grand Prix. Austria still happened. He still got the win there. We still got a DNF. But we've undone one of those races with this result. And that's a step in the right direction. There's still a 16-point gap between myself and Russell, which is still quite large. But it's not as menacing as the 41-gap point we had before. Leclerc, though, had a very difficult race. And so in the constructors, you know, we gain a little bit. But McLaren's still there in the lead and we've still got work to do. But, you know, what a race for us. 
What a crucial and a great answer back to the two DNS in a row. But like I said, we were on. We could have won Austria and Britain. We didn't because of the DNFs. We won Belgium. We made sure we made up for at least one of those races. And we go again at Italy. And we're going to try and do the same. Because there's no reason why we shouldn't be quick around Italy. We have been quick around Belgium, around Austria, around Silverstone. The momentum's with us. We've got a good car. I'm driving really well. But the two DNFs have just, you know, obviously pushed us back. But we are going to try and, you know, go against the adversity and try and come back through in this championship. Guys, if you have enjoyed this episode, though, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.